time when I present something to our C++ community, but as already was mentioned, but hope not the last. And today's our topic is C++ idioms. Everyone should know. C++ has a lot of idioms, but today we start really simple. I would even say we start from the basics. And for now, we have five items on the table. It is CRTP, return type resolver, erase remove, RAI, and virtual constructor. If those fancy words like tells nothing to you, don't really mind, you probably use most of them, if not all, in your code base. Before we procedure, we need to understand uh, what is idiom, what means idiom in programming. So here we have what Wikipedia says about it. But to simplify, we can say that <clears throat> idiom, it is a piece of code, which is written in a very language specific way. Means if you write an idiomatic code, means you use some unique features of the languages of the language which other languages may lack or may not um, and for example uh, in the c++ to output some text to the console you can use stdc out right but for python developer it makes no sense as well as for incrementing uh, integers like, like this using i++ so these two are the simplest c++ idioms now moving to the first uh, item is crtp uh, it stands for curiously recurring template pattern. And the second most popular name is a static polymorphism. The idea behind this, this uh, idiom is to reduce the duplication in the derived classes by extracting all of them to the base class, but at the same time, allow all the derived classes to customize the, the you know, common implementation. And, uh, you know, the structure is uh, the following. We have the base class. It should be template base class. Then a few derived classes, which put themselves into the template parameter like this. And it may look like it doesn't really make sense, but uh, let's see some example quickly. Uh, can you see my, my uh, editor? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, as I mentioned, the second most popular name for CRTP is a static polymorphism. And it would be pretty fair to compare it with dynamic polymorphism first. Uh, so, uh, I do this. Okay. Uh, so, here is the classical example of dynamic polymorphism, right? We have some base class with virtual uh, method, in, in, like interface for the clients, and each of the derived class can either implement. Uh, Overwrite the the current interface or leave it as default if base class provides default implementation. So this is classical uh, dynamic polymorphism. We have virtual tables here. We have uh, dynamic dispatch and all that stuff, with, which really causes some uh, runtime performance issues. And the same example, but with static polymorphism, can look like this. Again, we have the base class. Uh, we have the interface methods, but Taken out, it is not in virtual. All it does, it simply transfers the call to the derived class by casting this pointer to the derived pointer, which is, by the way, captured in the template. And this is the beauty of CRTP. You know, uh, then the base class can provide some default implementation like this, which which derived classes can use, or uh, derived class can kind of define all an implementation by, by hiding the base class implementation. The most important part here is uh, this casting of this pointer to the derived pointer and implement and inheriting uh, in this way, like when you when you put yourself into the template parameter. Uh, so that was like a bit more abstract uh, example. Let's see more or less, uh, I know, real, I don't know. Uh, so uh, here we have animal hierarchy. We have interface for animal, animal should say hello. And each of the derived classes just implements of a version of the say hello. And well, that's a bit silly example, but we have some duplication over here, right? Here and there. And the obvious solution would be to extract this duplication to the base class 
and provide uh, the virtual method for unique implementation. It means virtual method for this unique lines. And the solution with, with dynamic polymorphism looks like this. Yeah, again, we may have some base class, which implements say hello, and it stores some duplicated code like hello, I am, and it provides simple virtual method to get name of this specific animal. It can provide for a default or cannot. And simply each of the derived classes uh, implements of a unique version of get name. And that's it. We, we, we simply reduce the duplication using dynamic polymorphism. But again, it's dynamic one. Uh, take a look at this static version of, the, of, of, of this. So we have, again, uh, this uh, base class, uh, same function, say hello. We store duplicated code over here, but now we do not call the virtual method. We simply transfer the call by casting this pointer to the concrete animal. And the idea is, you know, got pretty similar, but here we have templated class and derived classes put themselves here. And, you know, it is, it is static version, clean, clean, pretty and, and simple. Uh, one more example uh, is when you, okay, sometimes uh, you want to manage number of instances for your classes. And, uh, well, we have a uh, singleton for this, right? But it works until we have only a single instance, right? But sometimes we need to limit our instances, let's say, to two or three instances, right? And CRTP can be pretty handy in this case. So uh, we have we might have a class like uh, in this case limit number of instances, uh, which gets the the concrete class to be limited and the max number of instances. And all we need is to to store static thread safe counter. We need to increase it in the constructor and decrease it in the dis destructor. And in the constructor as well, we need to to check is it still a valid number of instances uh, or not. And you know handle somehow and when you derive uh, your concrete classes from the from this uh, crtp class you put again yourself and a max number of instances and because of the base class constructor is called before the derived one you get kind of automatic uh, management of your instances uh yeah there are a lot of actual examples of crtp uh, and we will show one more later but hope uh, some of some of them I showed uh, help you uh, to to understand the basic idea behind the CRTP. And to to wrap up uh, this idiom, uh, what we get? So we get the compile time comp computation because of the uh, template instantiations happens on the compile time. So you for sure get better performance compared to runtime. But at the same time, your compilation gets longer. Uh, then it's great tool to reduce code duplication, but compared to dynamic polymorphism, you are less flexible because you cannot extend the hierarchies during the runtime. Uh, okay. Next one is uh, return type resolver. Well, as, as uh, the name suggests, the idea is to deduce the type of the variable we are assigned it to. So, okay, Im imagine the case. Uh, you want to create, um, you want to fill some STL container with random numbers, okay? But you don't know the type of the container. It can be either list or vector or anything else which behaves like, like STL container. And uh, the obvious solution would be to here is my code. The obvious solution would be to provide some uh, template uh, template function, which gets the type of the container into its template, and you know simply fills it somehow. Uh, but when we start use it, uh, for example, in the first two lines, we need to manually specify the type of the container here, and you know even in these two cases we should uh, put it twice, like here and here. Well, definitely in the modern C++, we can avoid second typing of the name of the container name by using auto. But let me show you a solution with return type resolver. 
<clears throat> Here's the code. Uh, all you need to is to create a proxy class which has some uh, constructor and conversion operator. In this case, it's template conversion operator since we want to work with any container, right? And <clears throat> here is how we can use it. Uh, at this line, when we initialize the container, the temporary object of get random and class is created. And then C++ compiler tries to assign this class object temporary class object to the container. Uh, and the only way to do this is by using the conversion operator. And that means that this conversion template op uh, operator is instantiated with a concrete type, means std vector of, of int goes here, and we got kind of automatic type, uh, return type resolver. And, you know, just look how clean it is. Uh, one more useful uh, solution for use when you can use return type resolver can be found in the strings. So imagine you have this code, okay? You have a string and you want to assign, uh, you want to create integer or double or anything else from the string. Well, sh for sure, you need to use some converters. Uh, STD provides these methods like story or start but you have to manually convert all of them here. Take a look at the solution with uh, return type resolver. So we have the proxy class from string, let's say. Uh, in the constructor, we get the target string, and we simply provide the conversion operators. In this case, we have for integer and for double, and in, inside we use appropriate version of this converter, like here for story for in, start for double, and just, just look how clean it is. You know, you, you don't need to worry about anything, uh, how to, how to, which method to use to convert and etc. And again, to, uh, it was example, uh, to sum up, uh, return type resolver, re resolver, you got really clean API. You don't need to worry how to convert. I mean, if, if you're a client, yes, you don't, you don't need to worry how to uh, manually specify the type. But uh, at the same time, you pay for creation and destruction uh, of some temporary objects, which may not be the best case. Um, okay. Next one, erase, remove. Uh, the idea behind this uh, idiom is to really, really, really remove elements from any STL container. So uh, when you use uh, std remove algorithm from the STL, it does not really remove elements from the container. All it does, it simply kind of moves the elements to the end of the container, and that's all. And it, it doesn't change the size. It doesn't change the end iterator. It simply moves them to the end of the container. And if you really want to remove uh, the, the elements from the container, you have to use member function because they know the internal data structures and only them can really remove the, the elements. And the code is, is pretty simple. All you need to do is to call erase and remove in a row. <clears throat> in this case, std remove returns an iterator to the kind of removed sequence and then you need to pass this iterator to the erase member function. But take a note, you need to, to uh, provide a second end iterator, I mean, second parameter to the erase, which is end iterator uh, to, to eliminate all of the elements. And well, basically that's it, simple, and, and you probably know this. Uh, okay, next one. Right. Uh, first of all, it stands for resource acquisition is initialization. And I can for sure say this is the most important idiom in modern C++. It's really game changer. So uh, all you know, for example, when you, when you allocate resources using new operator, you have to call delete somewhere else. And same happens to all kind of acquire release pairs. Yeah, like lock mutex and lock mutex or open file, close file. You have to keep 
this acquire release pairs in your code. But if you if you omit, for example, one delete, then you are in trouble. You might get uh, exceptions. You might get uh, you know memory leaks and all that stuff. And the idea of why resource acquisition is an initialization to kind of automate this resource religion somewhere at the end. At the end, I mean, when, when the object leaves the scope. So here is the, the real structure. Oh, no, be, be before the structure. Uh, you can find Rai in STL, and STL extensively actually use Rai in the strings, in the containers, uh, especially in the smart pointers. Yeah, when you create a smart pointer, you don't have to worry when to delete the resources in the some trans, thread synchronization primitives. And by the way, starting from the C++ 20, we have JThread, which stands for join thread. It simply joins in the destructor. So all this stuff is using write. And the structure is simple. All you need to do is to encapsulate resource management to some class and simply acquire the resources in the constructor and then release them in the destructor. And due to the nature of C++ scope, when the object leaves the scope where it was declared, then the structure is called means underlying resources are freed. And just to depict what I said, here is the some sample code of auto delete class, which uses right. So uh, it gets uh, any pointer in the constructor, stores it, and in the destructor, it simply deletes it. You know, that's all. Acquire in the constructor, release in the destructor. And at the bottom, you, you have some sample how you can use it. So you, you create an integer, you put this integer to the, I mean, you know, on the heap, you put this integer to this constructor, and you don't have to worry where to call delete on this integer. And Rai is good, and but it's not so flexible, okay? Uh, it releases resources often. Means even if you get exception or you leave the scope, it will release your resources. But sometimes we want to release resources only when we get the exception. If no exception, we don't want to release resources. And let, let's see some sample how we can do this with Rai. Okay, uh, all you need is to kind of extend Rai with one more Boolean variable. That's all you need to do. Uh, by the way, this idiom itself called scope guard. It's like extension of Rai, but let's consider this as Rai. Uh, so you should have, uh, let's say, Boolean variable and uh, which is true by default. And in the destructor, you check, is it still true? And if so, you release the resources, okay? And then you have to provide some, some uh, method to, to change this, this Boolean variable to false. And now, uh, here is the example, which is more important. Now, uh, when you declare your, your guard, and if something's wrong here, means before the object leaves the scope, then uh, this locked variable is still true and the resource is going to be released. But at the end of the scope, you need kind of unlock this guard. It means nothing happened before this, this point. Now you unlock this guard and it means resources are not going to be released in the normal execution, I mean. And yeah, that's that's pretty it about <laughs> Rai extension and uh, I find it find it uh, useful in, in certain scenarios. Um, okay, to to sum up, uh, with Rai you get the great encapsulation since you again manage resources in the class. You get exception safety. You it's the great way to clean to separate cleaning up logic from the main logic of your code it gives you automatic reverse order cleanup and you know it's simply elegant but at the same time you need to analyze who should get the ownership 
who not, uh, how to transfer ownership, how to deal with some circle of dependencies, if you have such, and that that's kind of kind of disadvantage for this one. Uh, yeah, uh, and the last one is virtual constructor. Uh, the idea behind this is to create a copy or create a totally new object without knowing its concrete type. Uh, natively, C++ has virtual destructors, right? Uh, they allow you to properly delete the resources of the derived class using pointer to the base class. But C++ lacks the same for creation and copying of the objects. And well, the idea of virtual constructor to, to, to allow this. Uh, okay, here should be should be example time. And let's see. Again, uh, we have our animal hierarchy. We have some uh, interface animal dog and cat. And imagine you have some animal provider, um, which returns pointer to, to animal interface, but under the hood, it creates the concrete animal. And somewhere in the, in the code, you get the animal. And now suddenly you want to create a copy, but you cannot since, you know, interface cannot, interface pointers cannot be copied like this. Uh, well, the, the bad solution for this would be to cast the animal to the concrete, concrete derived class and call copy constructor of this. But you know, you know how bad it is. I'm not talking about exception safety and all that stuff. And the solution with virtual constructor, well, is really straightforward. All you need is just add two more methods uh, to your interface, like one for create, one for copy. And each of the derived class simply, uh, you know, implements the right version for creation and the right version for copying the, the concrete animal. And you don't have a problem with how to copy, how to copy the, the concrete, uh, how to copy the animal without knowing its concrete type. Uh, you can go even further and uh, add CRTP here. So you will need to hang one more uh, class between this uh, interface and the route classes, which is called, for example, animal base. It CRTP class, okay, it implements create and copy uh, methods. In the create, it simply returns the new concrete type concrete animal which is captured in the templates and in the copying we uh, cast this pointer as we saw previously to the concrete animal and calls the copy constructor in the concrete animal and yes you don't need to worry in the derived classes how to implement all of this you simply you know inherit from this base class and uh, that's all you need to do uh, Yep. So looks like, yeah, that, that's it. Um, to wrap up this section uh, with virtual constructor, you can really decouple object creation or copying from its type, but you need to change the interface, original interface, which is sometimes may not be possible. Uh, Okay, uh, I was too 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 fast, too quick today, so uh, I finished a bit, bit faster than expected. And uh, let's wrap up our presentation. So today we covered CRTP, which also stands for static polymorphism. When you create the, uh, when you specialize the base class using derived class as argument, then return type resolver to uh, kind of deduce the type of the variable you are assigned to and erase remove to really, really remove elements from STL containers. Then you got, we got RAI, uh, resource acquisition is initialization to automatically uh, release resources. It, it gives you like feeling that C++ has garbage collector and the virtual constructors, which allows you to create copy or create totally new instances without knowing its concrete type. And 
we are done. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for attention. Um, any, thank you. any question? Any uh, thank you, Andre. Maybe someone has uh, any questions. Okay, looks like no, <laughs> everything is clear. Uh, I would like to say thank you, Andre, for your presentation and thanks all for joining. And um, you will receive a feedback form shortly. Please complete it. It's uh, like your opinion matters for us and uh, we will be happy uh, to see all of you next event. Please uh, take care of yourself. Uh, have a nice day. Bye. Yeah, thank you guys. Have a nice day. Uh, great presentation. Thank you, Andre. Bye. You. <laughs> thank you. Thanks.